back at the annual meeting of Women's Cancer for the Society of Gynecologic Oncology, and we're here with an expert on PARP inhibitors, and we're going to spend a little time talking about PARP inhibitors and their treatment of ovarian cancer. And so I ask you to introduce yourself. Hello, I'm uh, Jonathan Lederman. I'm Professor of Medical Oncology at uh, UCL Cancer Institute in London, and I'm uh, here today to present uh, some data that we've got on trials in PARP inhibitors. Let's start in just a brief foundation on what are PARP inhibitors and how are they currently being trial, uh, used in trials for ovarian cancer treatments? So PARP inhibitors are a novel group of drugs uh, that uh, affect the way in which cells repair DNA damage. DNA damage is occurring all the time in cells and uh, one of the enzymes called PARP is important in uh, regulating that damage. Now if you inhibit uh, PARP, that enzyme by a drug, a PARP inhibitor, you can in some patients uh, affect the way in which the cell repairs its damage. That's been shown to be particularly important in women who have the inherited BRCA gene mutation because they have uh, deficiency in repairing their DNA damage and rely very much on the enzyme PARP. So that if you inhibit PARP in these women with a PARP inhibitor, you find that you get tumor shrinkage. And this has been shown particularly in ovarian cancer, but also in breast cancer. Uh, obviously, there are lots of studies going on with this, and you're here presenting one particular PARP inhibitor. Can you describe a little bit of what you're presenting and what are some of your findings that you're finding in your studies? So what we have done is to, to build on the knowledge that's already been obtained about PARP inhibitors in uh, patients with BRCA gene mutations, because it turns out that there may be a much larger group of women who have the same problems in repairing DNA damage as the women do with BRCA gene mutations. And this is a group of women who have the more most common type of ovarian cancer, which is high-grade serous ovarian cancer. So what we did was a randomized trial using Olaparib, which is one of the PARP inhibitors, uh, in these women. And we took women who had received platinum-based chemotherapy and responded to platinum-based chemotherapy, given for recurrent disease, and then randomized these patients to either continuing with Olaparib as a maintenance treatment or placebo and then looked at the uh, outcome of these women uh, as time goes on. So uh, right now, where are you with your data and what are you seeing uh, with progression-free survival and overall survival using Olaparib? So the trial uh, comprised 265 women from, from all over the world as the randomized trial. And the initial analysis we did was on time to progression, the progression-free survival. And what we showed was there was a highly significant improvement in the progression-free survival favoring those women in Olapar on Olaparib. That's to say that they uh, had a much longer time on maintenance therapy before they progressed and required further chemotherapy. And those data were presented last June. What we've done today is presented information about the overall survival of these women. Now this was done uh, as an interim analysis, um, so the data are not yet mature and therefore not yet final, but these data did not show that there was any improvement in the overall survival to date in the patients taking a laparid compared with the women on the placebo arm. As you move forward in some of these studies, obviously in the middle of this study for overall survival and looking at what might be done in the future, uh, what are some of the uh, next steps uh, at looking at uh, these PARP inhibitors? Where are some of the places that we believe, or you believe, are the next steps for helping ovarian cancer treatment? Well, clearly we would have liked to have seen an overall survival benefit, but I think it's very important not to take away a message that there isn't a benefit from this drug in these women. It's probably that we just don't know how best to use the drug at the moment. There's no getting away from the fact that there was a really highly significant improvement in progression-free survival. So what we have to understand is which women actually benefit from this drug at what stage of their disease are they best treated and how are they best treated. Now for example, although there was no difference in survival in the interim analysis, we know that the time that we did the analysis, 21% of the women on Olaparib were still taking the drug, whereas only 3% of the women on placebo. So for some women it's a highly active drug and we need to explore this in greater detail. This is a wonderful information, especially for ovarian cancer patients as we look toward the future. Uh, what do you think, are, at the end of this study, uh, for a patient directly who's looking for clinical trials to be involved in, uh, what would you say to someone who's coming and looking to be in this? Why, would, why should they be involved in the next clinical trials for um, 
any of the PARP inhibitors. Well, I think this class of drug, the PARP inhibitor, is probably one of the biggest steps forward we've seen in the treatment of ovarian cancer for more than a decade. None of these drugs are yet licensed. We need to learn more about the drugs and how best uh, you know, they, they can be used. So I think it's, it's very helpful if patients are enrolled on these studies. I think one thing to say, which I haven't yet done, is that the toxicity, the side effects of these drugs are really very manageable. A little bit of nausea, a little bit of fatigue in some women, but nothing like the chemotherapy side effects that women normally experience. Great. Thank you very much. That was wonderful information. Thank you.